Hello everyone, welcome to my channel. I am sharing the teaching of Pastor Binihin, uh, interpreting the spiritual dreams. Unsa unsay mga meaning sa atong mga dangko uh, based in the Bible. So, kailangan po na to nga makabalupod ta unsay interpretation sa atong mga damgo kay dili man gud takabalo unsay interpretation ana pero kung mga damgo na to nga dili maayo ato na siyang iampo nga dili na may tabo sa atong kinabuhi sa una nga wala pa ko kaila og ginoo dili ko gaampo pero karon nga nagkaila ko gan og ginoo so ako ginang iampo para aduna kitay protection para aduna protection at ang mga pamilya nga gi-represent because sometimes dili man good na nga kita lang ang magdamgo sa atong kaugalingon sometimes it's repairing about other people or in a family and let's agree also in prayer because it is important that we have to know uh, the meanings of our dreams. If ever we have a dream like that, or what kind of dreams uh, that you have in life. And to Jesus be the praise and the glory and the honor and dominion and majesty now and forever more and God's people said amen and amen where would life be without the Lord I don't even want to think about it you know it would be better to have not been born than to live without Jesus I'm telling you right now because he is our life and I'm so glad today you've joined me thank you for being my wonderful friend and partner God's wonderful beloved people and today I'm going to continue teaching on dreams because the Lord has been speaking to me lately in dreams. In fact, I had a vision a few days ago. And I'm believing God is going to be speaking to all of us in dreams and visions often. And that's why I'm teaching on this because I believe that I, as I minister the word, your faith is going to rise for that. And you're going to start calling on the Lord for that because I think God really wants to speak to all of us today and remember whenever the Holy Spirit moves dreams and vision become the norm the norm so precious Lord we come today in Jesus holy name wonderful wonderful Heavenly Father we pray Lord today that you'll minister your word to us in a wonderful way Lord let faith arise in your people's hearts, Lord. And yes, Lord, begin to speak to all of us regularly and clearly for your glory and honor, how we love you and how we need you to hear your voice. Amen and amen. Especially in these days, we need to hear the Lord's voice continually. Remember what it says in in Acts 2. It shall come to pass in the last days, I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh, your sons and your daughters will prophesy. Your young men will see visions. Your old men will dream dreams. But I also showed you how Abraham in Genesis had a vision and then a dream. So, you know, God sometimes will speak to all of us through both visions and dreams, but mostly through dreams. Because visions reveal God, like in Genesis, you know, where he came to Abraham. And he said, I'm the Lord. I'm your exceeding and great reward. I'm your shield. But he came to me in a vision. But then he came later <clears throat> and showed him his plan in a dream. So visions reveal God and his nature. Dreams reveal God's plans and his purpose for your life. And today, more than ever, we all need to know what is God's plan for my life? And that's why I believe the Lord is going to speak to all of us in dreams. So let's look at Genesis 37. And I'm going to show you some things from the Bible. You know, like symbols that are biblical, not some invention of somebody out there, you know. So Genesis 37, beginning at verse 5. And Joseph dreamed a dream. 
and he told it to his brethren, and they hated him yet the more. And he said unto them, Here I pray you this dream which I have dreamed. And behold, we were binding sheaves in the field. <clears throat> and lo, my sheaf arose, and also stood upright. And behold, your sheaf stood round about, and made obeisance, or they bowed to my sheaf. And his brethren said to him, Shall thou indeed reign over us? They immediately interpreted the sheaf to be them, the family. So here we see sheaves are always symbolic, biblically speaking, symbolic of families. Why would they have said that? Because they said, shall you indeed reign over us? Will you indeed have dominion over us? Well, he didn't say, you know, I saw you bowing. He said, I saw sheaf. I, I was in the field and there were sheaves. But your sheaves bowed to me. Behold, your sheaves stood around about and made obeisance to me, to my sheaf. So they interpreted that to mean them. So we know from this that anytime you see sheaf after they had plowed the land, it speaks of individuals, mostly families. And then it says this, and they hated him yet the more for his dreams and for his words. Watch now in verse 9. And he dreamed yet another dream and told it his brethren and said, Behold, I have dreamed a dream more. Now what does a dream? He says the sun, the moon, the stars made obeisance to me. They bowed to me. And he told it to his father and his brethren. And his father rebuked him and said to him, what is, this dream, what is this dream that thou hast dreamed? Shall I and thy mother and thy brethren indeed come to bow down ourselves to the, to the earth? Now here we have another interpretation. Joseph never, never said, I saw you, dad, and I saw my mother, and I saw you brothers bow down. Instead, he said, he said, I saw the sun I saw the moon and 11 stars. So we know from, from this that the sun represents Israel. The sun represents the nation of Israel. Because Jacob said, will you bow to me? And do you remember in the book of Revelation, you see the woman with the sun and the stars and so on. That's Israel. So the sun in the heaven represents Israel. The moon represents who? Also Israel. But then it says, because Leah, Rachel are in Israel, the stars represent the children of Israel in this case. So whenever we see dreams to do with stars, it speaks of the Jewish people. Whenever you see the sun, the nation of Israel. Wherever you see the moon, nation of Israel. So how amazing, just from this we see that sheaves speak of families. Sun, the nation of Israel. Moon, same. Stars, Jewish people. How amazing. And there's a difference between the nation of Israel and the Jewish people because there's many Jews who are not living in Israel today. They live throughout the world. So... That to me is quite remarkable because it's all from the Bible. So I don't have to invent something. I don't have to go read something, you know, like people do sometimes, sadly. But this is scripture and it's so beautiful and so clear. And it says his brethren, verse 11, envied him, but his father observed the saying. How amazing. Now, in Genesis 40, because a lot of us, you know, sometimes have dreams and we don't really understand them. I think the first thing we have to do is look first at the Bible. What does the Bible say? What does the Bible say? That's what we're going to do today. And I'm going to continue again with you tomorrow. What does the Bible show us? Now, there are things from experience we know and from Scripture that backs it up. It's got to back it up. You know, otherwise, it can go wild, you know. But anyways, let's look at Genesis 40. 
let's look at verse 5. And it says this. Now, this is about when, when Joseph was the, the keeper of the prison. It's, well, let's just begin reading at verse 1. It came to pass after these things that the butler of the king of Egypt, his baker, had offended their lord, the king of Egypt. And Pharaoh was wroth against two of his officers, against the chief of the butlers, against the chief of the bakers. And he put them in ward or in prison in the house of the captain of the guard into the prison, the place where Joseph was bound. And the captain of the guard charged Joseph with them, and he served them, and they continued a season in ward. We're not told how often, how long they, they were there, but it says, and they dreamed a dream, both of them, each man his dream in one night, each man according to the interpretation of his dream the butler and the baker of the king of Egypt, which were bound in the prison. Now, it's interesting that God speaks both to the righteous and to the wicked in dreams. Remember what, what I said yesterday, and I'll say it again, and I, I think I just said it earlier. Visions reveal God, and visions belong only to the righteous, only to the righteous. While dreams reveal God's plans, God's purpose, and that God will use in speaking also to the sinner, not just the righteous. You recall what it says in Job, yesterday I shared that with you, that how, how God will come sometimes to, pull, to you know, pull people back from going down into the pit. He's trying to save them from their sin and transgression. So he'll give them a, a dream and often they ignore that dream sadly and are punished. But now here God comes to these two Egyptians who are not, you know, from his people, yet he speaks to them. So they dreamed a dream, both of them, each man in his dream, in one night, verse five, each man according to the interpretation of his dream, the butler and the baker of the king of Egypt, which were bound in the prison. And Joseph came in unto them in, in the morning and looked upon them, and behold, they were sad. He asked them, he said, he said, now why look you so sad today? Why are you so sad? They said to him, we have dreamed a dream, and there's no interpreter. So I'm sure they looked for, interp for the interpretation and nobody was able to interpret it for them. And Joseph said unto them, do not interpretations belong to God? How amazing. People usually look for others to interpret dreams, but here we hear only God interprets dreams. Only God can do that. Be careful today, be careful. Don't go online looking for dream interpretations because most of it is demonic and from you know the horoscope or this or that and that is demonic so be careful with that but here it says do not interpretations belong to god not to me joseph i'm not the interpreter of dreams not to somebody else god and i think often we make a mistake when we go to people and say, what do you think my dream means? I think we need to pray first. And say, so, Lord, please reveal that dream to me. And God usually will send someone like a Joseph to tell you what it, what it, it means. Who has that gift from the Lord? So we go to the Lord. So he says, now tell me them, I pray you. So he made two tremendous statements here. Number one, interpretations belong to God, but secondly, God will use a man to bring the meaning. Because he said, tell me them. I will be the vessel to tell you what God says. And the chief butler told his dream to Joseph and said to him, so pray for two things. First, let me just, because you know, I, mean, you know, I don't want to miss saying this. Talk to the Lord about it. If you have a dream that you, you don't un understand, just say, Lord, reveal it to me. He may reveal it to you without someone, but in most cases, someone will come along when you pray. Someone will come along to tell you who has that gift. This is what it means. Because God will reveal it. So, and the chief butler told his dream to Joseph and said to him, In my dream, behold, a vine was before me. Whenever you see a vine, it is always a good sign. It means a blessing, a blessing. Behold, a vine was before me, something good. And the vine, and in the vine were three branches. 
And it was as though it budded, and a blossom shot forth, and the clusters thereof brought forth ripe grapes. Grapes, vines are always, uh, you know, th there's good meanings in them. It's, it's not a bad thing when you dream about grapes, about a vine, because the vine always speaks of the church and Israel too, by the way, but mostly the church. Jesus said, I'm, I'm the vine, you're the, you're, you're the branches. So whenever you have dreams of grapes, it's peace of abundance, peace of blessings, peace of prosperity, peace of a good future. And Pharaoh's cup was in my hand and I took the grapes, I pressed them into Pharaoh's cup and I gave the cup to Pharaoh's hand. And Joseph said, this is the interpretation of it. Three branches are three days. Within three days shall Pharaoh lift up your head and restore thee into your place and you will deliver, or you'll give Pharaoh's cup into his hand after the former, the former manner. So here we see very clearly, vine, grapes, clusters, all that is a great blessing. Prosperity, great future, great abundance, and so much more. So if you've had dreams like that, rejoice. And of course, you know, he sees his three branches and he sees them as three days. And often God will show that to you too. Now, and by the way, numbers have a lot to do. You, you, may, you may see certain things with numbers in them or the, how many times they're repeated. And we'll talk about that tomorrow, by the way, because I, you know, I don't have today to talk about this. Because the numbers in the dream, like if a dream happens so many, so many times, it means that many times it will happen to you. Okay? So let's just keep, 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 keep going here. And, and now, oh, this is lovely. All right, let's just read the second dream now. And <clears throat> after this, he said, think well on me and so on. Now the chief baker saw that the interpretation was good. He said to Joseph, I also had had a dream. And behold, I had three white baskets on my head. And in the uppermost basket, there was all manner of baked meats for Pharaoh, and the birds did eat them out of the basket upon my head. Now, birds in dreams are always something bad. So if you have birds, if you see birds in your dreams, you better pray that God will stop whatever the, the enemy is planning, because birds are, are symbolic sometimes in the Bible, of the, of, of the demonic, like it says in Job 28, you know, the birds and the vultures don't know the path of the righteous. So birds often are symbolic of something that's not good. And then, so I'm telling you, I've had my own experience with that and I'll tell you about that in just, you know, just a little bit here. So let me just read it. In the uppermost basket, verse 17, there was all matter of baked meats for Pharaoh and the birds did eat them out of the basket upon my head. And Joseph answered and said, this is the interpretation thereof. The three baskets are three days. Yet within three days shall Pharaoh lift up your head from off thee, will hang you on a tree, and the birds will eat your flesh from off of you. Now, why did Joseph understand that birds were an evil sign? Because God showed that to him. And that is what the Bible says. So we can't go outside the Bible. Years ago, you know, Sue and I, my sweet wife, we went through a three-year divorce, but then we came back together. But right before that divorce, I would have birds come to my window and do this on the glass. And it freaked me out. Every day they would come and, and hit the glass with their peak, what, what do you call it, peak with their mouth? every day and I'm thinking, well, what, what's going on? Why these birds are doing that? And I tried to shush them away and every day they would come and, and I'm thinking, this is not something, you know, I, I, I'm, and I felt bad, I thought, I'm thinking something bad is coming. I didn't know to pray against it, you know, this is back 22 or nine. And then the Lord showed me from the word, from this and other portions, that birds exactly are not a good sign and I should have prayed against it but I did not sadly and what what was planned by the enemy actually happened 
But thank God it was only for three years and then God restored us and we're, we're happy and thank, thank you Jesus for it. But the, and I learned a lot, you know, for those three years. During those three years, I think I learned more about the, the anointing that I could have learned in any school because it showed me how the anointing, you know, in my heart can, can be affected by when things happen, but not on my office. There's a big difference between the anointing in you and the one on you. The, the one on you goes on. The, the one in you can be affected. That's for another time I'll talk about. In fact, I just wrote a book called The Mysteries of the Anointed it will be out next year by Charisma. You're going to love it. I'll tell you more about that later. But here it's amazing. So we, we see a number of, of things here in, in back to verse 17. He said, in the uppermost basket, there was all manner of baked meats for Pharaoh. And the birds ate them out. And then he says, upon my head. So birds and head told Joseph, he's going to hang him. So, and that's exactly what happened. Because birds and the head doesn't add up to something good. <laughs> Anyways. Now, let's, 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 let, let's go to Genesis 41. And we're going to read verse 32. Okay? I want to make sure... I give you all this and more today because I want to show you some other scriptures from Ecclesiastes because sometimes uh, dreams, uh, it says in the word, come because we desire them, not because God is talking to us. Now I'm sure that you too, because dreams sometimes are created by our own desires that are not to, you know, they're, they're, these are to be ignored, by the way. If they're created by your own desire, ignore them. But I will show you how in just a second and maybe I'll continue tomorrow on this. But first, uh, chapter 41 of Genesis and verse 32. And for that the dream was double unto Pharaoh twice, it is because the thing is established by God. So when, when a dream is repeated more than once, then we know we are to really pay attention to it. Okay? Now, let's go quickly to uh, chapter 41. And it came to pass, verse 1, it came to pass at the end of two full years that Pharaoh dreamed himself. Behold, he stood by the river, and behold, there came up out of the river seven well-favored kine, or cows, and fat fleshed, and they fed in the meadow. And behold, seven other kine came up after them out of the river, ill-favored and lean fleshed, and stood by the other kind upon the brink of the river. And we all know the story how the ill-favored and lean fleshed ate the ones who were fat and so on and the dream was repeated and then he saw seven thin ears blasted with the east wind and so forth and he saw them before he 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 saw they were you know they were uh, blessed they, they were full and so on when he, he he dreamed of seven you know ears of corn came up upon one stock rank so good and bad so cows and then corn but what does it speak of well, let me just read that to you. So now Joseph comes up and he says, I love this. And Joseph, this is in verse 15. And Pharaoh said to Joseph, I have dreamed a dream and there is none that can interpret it. I've heard say of the, of, of you, you can interpret it. And so Joseph, and Joseph answered and said, God is the interpreter. He'll, he'll give you peace. And then he said, Behold, I stood upon the bank of the river. This is verse 17. Behold, there came up out of the river seven kind, fat, fleshed, well-favored. They fed in the meadow. Behold, seven other kind came up after them, poor and very ill-favored, lean flesh, such as I never saw in all the land of Egypt for badness. And the lean and the ill-favored um, favored kind did eat up the first fat kind. And when they had eaten them, it could not be known that they were even, that even they even changed. And then he said, I had another... I had one more dream. Seven years. Um, anyways, he you know, f finishes his dream and so on. And then Joseph interprets and he says, the dream is one. The seven good kind are seven years and the seven good ears are seven years. So we know from this that cows speak of years. Corn speaks of years. God was showing Pharaoh 
the years of plenty and the years of famine. But with, what did he use for years? What did he show? Cows speaks of time. Corn speaks of time. So from these we know that, okay, if I have a dream and I see cows, it means time, years. Corn, same thing. Now, let's just quickly go before I am out of time. Ecclesiastes, okay? The book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 5, and verse 3, very, very quickly. For a dream cometh through the multitude of business, and a fool's voice is known by a multitude of words. So here we see sometimes dreams come because people desire them. And the Bible says also something in verse 7. In the multitude of dreams and many words, there are also diverse vanities. So dreams here come because people desire them, and the Bible calls them vanities, so we're to ignore them. Isaiah 29. So not all dreams are to, are, you know, we were to pay attention to, because some dreams are not from the Lord. But when they're from the Lord, when they're from the Lord, they are repeated. Because God wants us to know that they are really from him. I was reading this morning how when, when Peter had the vision, uh, when he was in Jaffa, where I was born, and he saw the sheets, you know, with all the animals, it happened, what, three times? Why three times? Because God knew he would question it if he only saw it once. And, you know, he, because at that time, uh, the Jewish people did not know that the Gentiles could be saved or that the gospel can, can also be preached to them. So God had to repeat it to say, it's me talking, not somebody else, not your mind. So sometimes when it's the Lord, he repeats it over and over and over to us. He speaks often, as it's as it said in, in Job 33, which I read to you yesterday, it says how often God does that with all of us. So uh, Isaiah 29, 8, it shall even be as when a hungry man dreams, and behold, he eats, but he awaketh, and his soul is empty. Or when a thirsty man dreams, and behold, he drinks, but he awakes, and he's still faint, and so on. I've heard how people sometimes, uh, like people that are sick, let's say, in some with some disease, will dream that they are healed. Or someone who is missing a part of their body will dream that they have it, you know, that they are, they, that they are whole. And it's true, because I think the desire creates it. They, they want it so bad, it actually turns itself into a, a dream. And uh, you know what? We'll go through through much more with you tomorrow because sometimes God uses uh, other people to interpret, to actually tell you his plan through their dreams, which happen in the book of Judges. But let's just pray right now. And tomorrow I'll continue. So please join me tomorrow. All right. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. The story of Gideon, you know, when when he came and he heard someone interpret a dream, had a dream, and somebody interpreted it, and God used these soldiers to tell Gideon what to do. So sometimes God would use people, give them dreams for you, in fact. But we'll talk about that later. Wonderful Lord, I thank you for your wonderful word. I give you praise. And Lord, I pray you'll bless your people today with dreams and visions. And Lord, give them the interpretations and let them know your voice clearly. And Lord, I pray right now, if anyone watching me has already had a dream and needs to know what it means, Lord, let them know if it's you and give them the meaning. If it's not you, Lord, then let nothing happen in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Now, remember what, what, what I just said to you. If it happens one time, it may not be the Lord. But if it happens more than once, pay attention to it. So, Father, in Jesus' name, Lord, let them know. Let them know when you're speaking. And, Lord, give them the interpretation, too, in Jesus' name. Now, Lord, touch your people. Bless them. Meet every need in their life spiritually every need emotionally bring healing to their body Lord bless their families bring salvation to loved ones 
and meet every financial need today. Lord, I come into agreement with them that every financial need is met in the dear, sweet name of Jesus. Take the burden, Lord, off their life, off their back. Take the worry out of their hearts and minds. Lord, give them peace today about this. In Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Remember.